Wag! Welcome everybody to a super exciting brand new Codex review or Kype Train. Let's go! Wah! That was impressive. Thank you. The Games Workshop gods have gifted us with the brand newest, shiniest, orkiest, greenest or codex that has ever happened to Warhammer in 10th edition. And we are super excited because we're going to break it down for you. We got brand new detachments. We got brand new rules. We got new shiny stuff. There's new, There's new good bits. And we're going to we're gonna bash them and smash them. That's right. That's what orcs do. So, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to put these on the table. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button while you're here because we're here to talk about these orcs. Before we do that, up live right now. Right now is a game featuring orcs. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you're telling me you can watch this video, learn about the changes to the orcs, and then sign up for the War Room for your three day free trial right now in the link below, thewarroom.vhx.tv, and watch a game with Jack and his orcs. That is exactly what I am saying. You, All should, right. you should do that. You should do that. You should do that. If you want to see the orcs being used live, uh, maybe, you know, we'll find out who I'm beating over the head and neck with them, but, you know, and don't somebody. Worry. We got plenty of orc content coming for you. We got the greenest. We got the bestest. We got orc reviews coming. We got orc tactics going. We got orc games coming. It's going to be a good time, so definitely check out that free trial. So let's get right in. Army rule is exactly the same, but it's worth mentioning because it's going to inform basically every other aspect of the book. Yeah. You'll get plus one on at the start of a battle round. You can call a wah. Wah! Just like that. If you do until the start of your next battle round, you can advance and charge. You get plus one strength and attacks and a five of invulnerable save. And those are a hell of a suite of buffs. Yeah, those are some game-defining, faction-defining buffs right there. I mean, we all know what orcs do. They wog, they smash stuff. They're plus one strength, plus one attack, advance and charge, five of invuls. What can you ask for? It would have been nice to have it start in your command phase instead of start a battle round. Right. Orcs do get a lot worse when they go second. Mm -hmm. um, but we also know how good they get when they go first. <laughs> They're real good when they go first. So that would have been nice, but ultimately it's a very strong rule and we're glad we have it. Yeah. All right, so first up is the War Horde. So this is a brand new detachment, right? We got all these new detachments? No, this is the Wa Tribe from uh, the Index. So they just renamed it. They just renamed uh. it to the War Horde. So going through, the detachment rule is the same, still sustained hits. All of the detachments are, are all the enhancements are exactly the same. We've got, in terms of stratagems, we've got Kareem, which is the same. We've got uh, Fight on Death. We've got Critical Fives in Combat, minus one to Wound other than Groth's monsters and vehicles. Okay. We've got a really bad battle shock thing that I still have never even thought about using and will never consider using. But these are all the same exact strats, enhancements, all that jazz that exists in the current work index. That's right. And then plus two advance and plus two charge. Solid detachment. Yeah. Nothing too nothing too wrong with it. Works are a good army yesterday. They're going to be a good army tomorrow. But you know what's exciting? we got five other new detachments That's to right. through. But if you want to play the War Horde, you absolutely can. It did not get worse. It still has a tremendous suite of rules. Uh, Quinn and I put it in our top 10 detachments it's list. A great it's a great detachment. The stratagems are phenomenal. Sustained hits across the army is great. I, we don't need to tell you this. So The only thing that I wish is they didn't rename it. I thought Wild Tribe was a great name. Wild Tribe is cool, but uh, War Horde, uh, it really, really sends a message it as does. to what's what's going to happen to you. Horde trying to wage war with you. We got that out of the way. Let's talk about some brand new detachments. The new shiny stuffs? The new shiny stuffs. So we got the big hunt. This Ooh. is like snake bites. This is beast snagas. This is this is that sort of stuff, which I personally think is super cool. Yeah, I love that new stuff. So they like to hunt particular targets. So let's get into their rules. Detachment rule is at the start of your command phase, you pick a monster, vehicle, or warlord unit in your opponent's army. Mm -hmm. So this does trigger start of the command phase, not start of the battle round. So you right. can. So every turn you're picking a new one. Every turn you're picking a new one, and your opponent doesn't know what you've picked when they take their turn, Ooh, nice. which is nice. It's like oath of moment. Right. If your opponent doesn't have any of these, you can select a character unit from your army opponent's army instead, which is nice. Not every army has monsters and vehicles. Mm -hmm. So against an army that doesn't have monsters and vehicles, you just go them. Yeah. Yep. And that's after you've killed their warlord, or their warlord is in reserves or something. But it's a really good flexibility point of the rule. Well, what do you get? Every time you declare a charge against that unit, 
you reroll charges, and it, the charges has to include that unit. So if you do a multi-assault and you want to charge that unit and like three other units that are nearby, just declare them and reroll those charges. Exactly. But on top of that, every time a beast snag them all attacks them, so shooting or combat, a beast snag is not really known for their shooting, mm -hmm. um, you get plus one AP. Nice, nice. Plus one AP, smashy pants. That's really great. Hate the Space Marines. Yes. Orcs really have bad AP, so they really like having that extra AP. It's it's a big weakness in Orcs, actually. Yeah. Big problem the, for Orc faction is like that two-up save with the Armor of Contempt ability to reduce your AP by one. It's like really hard to kill that, so this is great yeah. for that. Even your best units are going to struggle to give them more than a three up there, and with the Big Hunt, if their Warlord is in that unit, they're going to know. So the enhancements, we've got a Beast Boss on Squigasaur. So Beast Boss on Squigasaur now join units. Spoiler alert, we'll get to that Ooh. in the future. Um, the Bearer's unit gets Scout 9. So a Beast Boss on Squigasaur can join a unit of 8 uh, Squig, Squig Hog Riders. Spoilers Squig for days! Oh, oh man. Yeah, so that could be an 8-man unit with a Beast Boss on Squigasaur. They all get Scout 9. They start in your opponent's face on turn 1. No problems there. I, I personally think that's an auto take. That is such a good rule. That's really good. Scouting nine inches with a big squig hog unit and a beast boss, and that unit is so tough to kill. You go first, you call the log, turn one, charge that thing, and game could be over before it starts. It, it could be more likely what you're going to do is you're going to scout it forward, get a first charge, set the rest of your unit army up. Nice tempo. And then call log the second turn and go in. That's some stuff we teach in the war room. You want to learn the, the big tactics? Go check out that three-day free trial. All right, then we got scrag every stash, but yeah. Glory Hog, the Scout 9. Very good. Scrag every stash. Mm -hmm. uh, be snag a model only at the end of your command phase. If the bearer is in range of objective marker you control, they stick it. Nice. Sticky objective is great relic. Yep. Great relic. Uh, the bearer personally has to be in range. Sure. But this is pretty good on a Beast Boston Squeak of Sword joining a squad because you just make sure he's touching an objective and there you go. Yeah. Everyone else wants to be in a transport, so he's the only one that actually wants to be out of a transport to start the game. Mm -hmm. But that's a very good rule. Being able to just sticky objectives as you leave them is huge. Custodies really like that yeah. because I'll stick you an objective only one unit in the area. If you have a big 400 and whatever point unit of squig hogs plus a character, you don't want them chained to the objective. Yeah. And being able to stick you the objective and then move on is going to be huge. All right, next up we've got proper killy. Beast snag a model only plus one damage characteristic to melee weapons equipped by the bearer. That's awesome. Plus yep. one damage, crumping good times. It's really good. It's a bonus damage that applies to extra attacks. So oh. these bosses like that. Surly as a squigath. Beast Boss on Squigasaur only, while the bearer is leading a unit each time an attack targets that unit. If the strength is higher than the t their toughness, minus one to wound. Minus one to wound for strength higher than toughness, great rule, helps you keep alive the big squig hog boys. You love that stuff. Yep, this is probably the best enhancement in the entire detachment. Yeah. Giving a nine man squad of squig hogs minus one to wound is pretty disgusting. And you might be wondering how we keep calling it a nine man. We will get to that when we review that <laughs> data sheet. Yes. <laughs> All right, the stratagems, we've got drag it down. One beast snag a unit in your fight phase that has not been selected to fight yet. Melee weapons get sustained hits one, and if you target your prey, you get critical hits on fives. So that prey is the detachment where you pick it in the command phase, and then you're going to get those reroll charges and plus one AP in it. Now you get critical fives against it. And sustained. And sustained. Oh, yep. man. Sustained in general, very good rule. One CP for sustained, I would totally pay. But when you get one CP sustained crit fives, that's you're just gonna die. You're just you're just killing stuff. I I really like this this strat. I think it helps orcs kill the very hard to kill units that sometimes they just can't bring down in this game, and you know that's a problem that is now solved. All right, unstoppable momentum uh, charge phase just after a B snag a mounted unit ends a charge move. I wonder who could be mounted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you pick an enemy unit, engage a range, and roll a d6 for every model in your unit. On a 4 up, that enemy suffers one mortal wound. If that enemy unit is your prey, roll three additional d6. Okay, so not a strat you'll use all the time, I don't think, but a strat that's a good pocket strat. Sometimes you want to charge in, do some charge mortals, open up some pile and options, get some free damage on your opponent. It, it, if you charge with a 9-man, it is four to five mortal wounds for a CP. Well, yeah, right, for sure. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, it says models will engage range, so with those big squig hog riders, it's going to be hard to get no, all nine. No, oh, it's no, the unit. no, it's the good one. Oh, okay, so we're going to roll 12 dice a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah, you just like brush up against a unit, and you're like, all right, bow. 
Okay, okay. okay. This is <laughs> squid dog stink shock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got that one's even bigger. One CP in your charge phase, B snag a unit uh, until the end of your phase. They are able to uh, advance or fall back and charge, provided one of the targets of that charge is your prey. And it's fallback and charge, which orcs don't really have access to very well. One of the best ways to handle orcs is after they've kind of wagged you and killed everything in their face, you can start bumping into them with rhinos and things and tying them up. Being able to fall back and charge changes that dynamic yep. entirely. And you can game this system pretty hard as the orcs player because you just need to as one of the targets of the charge, declare the prey. So it's very easy to be like, one guy touches here, everyone else touches the unit I actually want to kill with them. Nice. And uh, then you can mess them up. Mm -hmm. So that's a very strong strategy. Then there's, where do you think you're going? I don't know. Where, where do you think you're going? <laughs> Away from the orcs. <laughs> one CP, your opponent's movement phase after an M unit ends a fallback move. A B snag infantry or mounted unit within engage range of that enemy unit at the start of the phase. Where <laughs> so, so maybe if someone falls back from your, your squad, I don't columns. know why they would do that. Yeah, where do you think you're going? <laughs> where do you think you're going? Yeah, you make a normal move of up to six inches. You can't engage them though, right? You cannot. Okay. So the way they clearly think that this is going to work, and the way that the 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 fluff has it working, is I charge you, you fall back, I kind of like go after you? Yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not how that's going to work. Perhaps maybe instead they fall back and they're like, okay, I'm going to go behind this wall right here. <laughs> Move block you a little Great bit. Great success. Oh boy, oh no. Beast, Beast Boy is getting into combat and then just like going behind a wall after you fall back. It's very good. Seems good. Seems yes. good. And there's no range on this, right? They don't have to end a move within nine or whatever. It's just, you were an engaged at range of me, now you're not. Whoop! That, yeah, that's pretty good. It's <laughs> going to be hard to keep the nine-man squigs, um, you know, out of line of sight of your opponent, but there's definitely going to be scenarios where you can. Yeah. Stalking tactics. After an enemy unit has selected the targets of a shooting attack in their shooting phase, a B-snag infantry or mounted that was selected as the target, each time a range attack targets you, you get cover. And if you have, if, if you are infantry, you get stealth. Okay, stealth and cover are good rules. Orcs are definitely not the durable army, but with the squig hog unit, you know the game is changing. Yeah, they're pretty. They're, the squig hogs are pretty tough. Uh, they don't really care about cover. They're getting cover anyway. Their bases are huge. They stick weapons out in every direction. Mm -hmm. Like they're getting cover. Cover's so, easy in Warhammer. Cover's easy right now. I I think this is if I absolutely need to keep an infantry unit alive, I'll give them stealth. Yeah. But I, I, I think you've got better strats to use, and you probably bingo. won't use this much. But it's nice. Then end of your opponent's fight phase. One CP. Pull a beast snag a unit from your army in, that is not engaged in range into strategic reserves. I love that. Up and down, into reserves, come somewhere else. One of my favorite strategies. Yep. Maybe not something orcs really want to make use of, but you can always reposition to get yourself in a better spot. You can. One downside here is it's only beast snag a units. Mm -hmm. None of those have deep strike stores, I'm aware, which means you are just coming in off the board edge. This is a good strategy. Yeah, absolutely. Especially given that we got raw power in the other ones. Right. You, you want to complement some raw power killiness with some actual mission play utility. Yeah. And then that's the detachment. I think that detachment is super cool. So what's this one called? The Big Hunt. The Big Hunt. The Big Hunt is on. I think it's the meta. You pick a unit, you're hunting that unit. I think it may be a little meta dependent when they're like singular big units that you really want to kill, like a monolith. Like this is going to be awesome. When there's like 25 sisters units running around the table and that's kind of a more MSU meta, maybe a lot of these rules are a little unnecessary. But to be fair against MSU, MSU has a really hard time dealing with like, because you're in this detachment, you're taking three big units of squid cogs, right? Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of those MSU armies find it hard to deal with that kind of pressure, mm -hmm. that kind of board swarm. And you can get a lot of the rules if you just declare them as a charge target. Even so, I, I am very interested in this army. Like, I'm very yeah. interested in this. I, liked, uh, I like Beast Nagas. They're my favorite part of the codex. And squig hogs are also my favorite part. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool. I love that they're introducing squigs as a real feature of the orc army, and they just keep on investing rules and effort into the squig style. I think that's super cool. Yep. I love it. I'm going to be an orc squig boss. You heard me. I, I did hear you. Now, there are, is also another detachment that buffs squig hog riders, and we'll get to that when they we get to it. They love them squigs. They do love them squigs. I love them squigs. Favorite unit in the book. Wow, there we go. All right, so what's right. next? Next up, we got Cult of Speed. Oh, I wonder if this is like an homage to the good old Speed Freaks. All right, well, let's take a look through. So their detachment rule is Adrenaline Junkies. 
which means they are able to shoot after they advanced or fell back. Well, you're getting shot. That's the that's the name of the game yep. here. And it's just speed freaks units. So that's you know, like Def Cop does. War um, bikers, war bikers, uh, all the buggies, but it's not like mech tanks or anything. It's like not that. the trucks. It's not battle wagons. It's certainly not any of the squid bot boys or regular boys. Any of that. Exactly. All right. The enhancements: Waz Blasta, uh, Death Killer War Trike only in your shooting phase after they've shot. Uh, you can make a normal move of up to six inches. The firing thing's not as powerful here as, you, as like an Eldar army's firing phase because that unit is such a large footprint. They're not going to just be able to hide behind terrain too well. No, you have a hard time doing that. For it's sure. also not really the orky way. No, no. Cult of Speed's always been a little bit cowardly compared mm. to compared to big, big smash, big beefy smash orcs. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think you needed maybe nine inches in order to actually get a unit behind terrain. Yeah. Six is just. I think this sounds like a really good rule, but in the context of the units it'll be used on, it doesn't actually work that well. Yeah, I, I think it, you still take it because it, moving six inches after you shoot is a good rule, whether you're going deeper yeah. or doing whatever. That's where I think it'll really be useful, just going deeper. Yeah, exactly. So you mm -hmm. can take him by himself because he doesn't require a leading mm -hmm. unit to do it, and then you can just go yard. So next up, we got faster than use. Faster than use? Faster than use. Oh. Not faster than me's. No, fast that's jack over here. That's right, that's what they call me. Uh, orc infantry model only. Every time the bear's unit disembarks from a transport, uh, they are still eligible to declare a charge. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Advance and charge, or, or disembark and charge is just a fantastic rule. Like, get, drive the battle wagon, drive the truck, get out of the thing, smash them, buddy. Yeah, land raiders do the same thing. Like, this gives you an infantry unit, like a knob unit, probably, that's just pretty good at being fast and hitting hard. Advancing or moving the truck, getting out and charging was something we had last edition and it was very strong. Yeah, it, it's just a great rule. Squig hide tires, death kill war trike model only. Every time the bear's unit makes a consolidation move, it moves up to six. Mm -hmm. It's all right. If you have points left over, you'll take it, but I'm yeah. not that excited. I'm not going out of my way for this thing. No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Speed, may, unless there's some benefit to your opponents being in engage range of you. Or something like that. Speed makes right. Orcs model only in your command phase. If the bear is within nine inches of one or more enemy units, roll a d6. On a three up, you gain a CP. Okay, so you can like drive somebody in the middle of your opponent's army and like probably get a CP. If uh, they live. If they live. I mean, it, you don't have to kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to be behind the wall. Um, I don't know. I, it's not a bad way to get a CP. I'm not excited about it. Now, you can can be a transport the bear is embarked upon. Oh, that's nice. Which is nice. Nice, yeah. All right, stratagems. One CP, we've got speediest freaks. Your opponent's shooting or fight phase, just after they selected their targets. One speed freaks or trucks unit from your army that was selected as the target of one or more attacks. Malls in your unit get a five up invuln. If your unit is a vehicle with, with toughness eight or less, they get a four up invuln. Okay, so it's like not going to be necessary on your log turn, but maybe a staging turn for like a battle wagon or a truck with a four up invul that could be good. It, it'll work on buggies. It's okay. One CP invul it's fine. Yeah. Squig flinging. <laughs> <laughs> One CP in your movement phase after a speed freaks or truck unit ends a normal advance or fallback. You pick an enemy unit within nine and they take a battle shock at minus one. So I don't know that you'll ever want to spend the strat to do this, but there are times where a battle shot can win you a game. It's true. Like yeah. you just need to take an objective and you need to like to so you can cleanse or whatever. Yeah. You motor your dude up and you're like, take a battle shock and then oh you failed it, cleanse. Yeah, minus one. Certainly not the strategy your army's gonna be making use of, but you know, knee strats or knee strats. Yep, yep, absolutely. Daka Storm, one CP in your shooting phase, one speed freaks unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot. Ranged weapons equipped by models in your unit have sustained hits one, and if they target a unit within nine inches, they get sustained hits two. And they can't be targeted by that or the next and the next strat at the same time. So funny thing about sustained hits, it's functionally plus one to hit, because every time you roll six, you know, you'll just get another hit, which is the same as plus one. Yeah. And sustained hits two is a funny way to get plus two to hit. Sustained hits two is a hell of a uh, hell of a drug. And war bikers also get plus one AP against closer targets. Right. So you really want to get right up on top of your opponent, it's throw out a ton of shots. And you advance and shoot, so that's not even that hard. Yeah, so I mean it's very committal, right? You're sticking your army right in front of your opponent, but it's, you are doing you're playing orcs. <laughs> you're, you're playing orcs. You're still playing, even though you're shooting, you're playing orcs. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a pretty hefty damage upgrade yeah, for sure, and it's only definitely. one CP. 
Now you can't combine it with the next strat. Let's find out what that is. Mm -hmm. The next strat is Blitzafire. Uh, in your shooting phase, until end of phase, ranged weapons equipped by models in your unit have lethal hits. And if you target a unit within nine, you get crit fives. So that's okay. why you can't target them at the right. same. Imagine crit five, sustained two. Oh. Yeah, it's a <laughs> sustained, sustained two lethal fives. Yes. Yeah, Nick just it's like. Yeah, no. Unfortunately, they saw through my tricks. Yes. <laughs> but uh, both very good strats. Lethal hits, obviously, for tougher targets. Sustained hits for more numerous targets. Glad you got both. Yes. We've got full throttle, one CP in your charge phase. Just after a speed freaks unit from your army ends a charge move. Until the end of the phase, uh, every time they make a melee attack, add one to the wound roll. Plus one on one is great. Yeah. That's just a great ability. I mean, you know. Hit stuff harder. It hits stuff harder. Now, speed freaks units in particular don't hit stuff very they're hard to begin be with. Orcs. Yeah. They're, they still have choppas, but like they're definitely not crumping. Yeah. More gets over ear. More gets over ear. That's right. One CP. All of these are one CP. Your opponent's movement phase just after an enemy unit makes a normal advance or fallback move uh, within nine of you, you can move up to six. I like that. Moving in your opponent's turn is a phenomenal ability. Guaranteed six inches is great. Now again, the war bikers and the speed freaks models in general have enormous bases, so it's not as nimble as a little elf doing a phantasm, but it's a great rule. All right, and that's speed freaks. So speed freaks is pretty cool. I mean, I don't think they have the raw power to, to back it up, but I kind of like that. I think if speed freaks actually had more offensive strats, it would actually be Tau in disguise, and nobody wants to play no, with Tau. No, nobody wants that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they don't, they're also buffing the units that don't shoot that hard, like war bikers have a lot of shots, but still kind of hit on fives and... When you look at the units they're buffing, it's like largely like kind of trash units like Warbikers used for skirmishing and small stuff. Like you're, they're trying to make bad units be the centerpiece of the army, and I don't know that that's going to work. It's also a lot of buffs to Speed Freaks units, which are Warbikers and single model units. Right, like all the buggies. Like am I going to give a buggy that has like D3 plus one shots blast sustained hits? Not really, I'm going to put on more bikers. Right. I'll be interested to see if someone, a dedicated orc speed freaker, can figure out a way to make this detachment work, but I don't think this is where the sauce is at. No. But speaking of sauce, what sauce? Dreadmob. Dreadmob. All right. So the Grats have been hard at work in the mech workshop doing all kinds of weird stuff. And let me tell you, this detachment is nutty. This detachment is pretty wild. So let's let's jump right in. First up, we got the detachment roll, which is try that button. Boop. Bear with me here. Every time a mech, orc walker, or grot vehicle unit is selected to shoot or fight, roll a d6. Until the end of the phase, weapons equipped by models have a corresponding ability shown in the table below. If you roll one or two, you get sustained hits one. If you roll three or four, you get lethal hits. And if you roll five or six, on critical wounds, improve the armor penetration characteristic by two. That's critical wounds, not critical hits, in case you have some kind of crit fives. Mm -hmm. So it's either lethal or sustain or sometimes an AP bonus based on a random result. Incredibly orky. <laughs> that is true. Alternatively, when such a unit is selected to shoot or fight, Remember, it's both. <laughs> you just the shooting phase or the fight phase. Uh, you can select one of the abilities instead of rolling the D6. If you do so, weapons equipped by models in that unit have the hazardous ability as well. <laughs> yeah. And there's a brand new rule for hazardous in this detachment. In this detachment, if a weapon equipped by a model from your army has the hazardous ability from multiple sources, you fail on a one or a two. Oh. There are a lot of ways to overcharge your weapons and get hazardous. I love the thematicness of this. I think this is so orky, so grotty, so... I don't know if this is going to be good. That remains to be seen. We'll figure that out. But this is, this is fun. What's nice is every result on that chart is good. Yeah. So you can feel free to just roll for it. Especially against like a space marine army, right? When like every single result will have value. Like you play against demons, the AP might not matter at all. Maybe you really want those lethal hits for those tough monsters. But, you know, against medium profiles, just roll it. Just roll it. And mm. keep in mind, this is this can also be any unit joined by a mech. Ah. Because any mech unit, orc walker, or grot vehicle. There okay. are a lot of those. So like mechs joined a looters, maybe. I don't know. Yes. Uh, the grot tanks are kind of ridiculous in this detachment. Flash kits. All right. Smoky Gubbins. This is the first enhancement. Models in the bears unit have stealth. All of these can only go on mechs. Okay, so if mech joins a unit, that unit has stealth, 
perfectly fine. It seems all right. Yeah. I'm not going crazy about it. If you have extra points, stealth is not bad to but have. Orcs aren't really trying to be the durable faction, but like that's fine. That's yeah. Super glowy thing. Mech model only in your command phase. Select an enemy unit with an 18 invisible. On a 1 or a 2, they have to take a battle shock test. On a 3 or 4, that enemy unit takes D3 mortal wounds. A 5 or a 6, until the start of your next command phase, every time a model in that enemy unit makes an attack, minus one to hit. And what's the range of this ability? 18, and it's in your command phase. I like it. It's It depends on the points, right? If it's yeah, cheap, it's then cheap. It, this is definitely not a build around. No. Because you have no idea what the hell is going to happen. But neither does your opponent. No, that's true. <laughs> You can either do a battle shock, D3 mortal wounds, or make the minus one to hit. None of these are like, this isn't like on a one or a two, you do a small version of the effect, three, yeah. four, you do a medium, five, six, you do a heavy version of it. This is three different effects. Yeah. Nobody knows. Let's What's see what happen? happens. <laughs> <laughs> Press it faster. <laughs> Each time the bear's unit is selected to shoot, when rolling to determine which ability they get from try dat button. Roll one additional D6 until the end of the phase, ranged weapons equipped by models in that unit gain both button effects generated by those rolls. If you roll a duplicate, no additional effect. All right, that's very orky. I like that you don't just keep re-rolling it. You yeah, roll yeah. two fives, screw no, you. Sorry, that's what you got. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. Yeah, that one is insane. It goes on mechs a lot of the time. You're, you're have, taking that. You're taking it's going to hit harder. A lot harder. Unless <laughs> you roll the same number twice. Uh, get finder goggles. Uh, range weapons equipped by models in the bear's unit. Get ignores cover. Ignores cover is a great rule, especially for orcs who have a bit of an AP issue. Big fan. Big fan. Big fan. Uh, it's, it's just really good. All right, let's get into the strats. Clank and Claws. Clank and Claws. These are such great names. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're, they're, orcs have always had really, really good names. Every single one of these straps is 1 CP. Um, pretty sure all of the other detachments have been 1 CP, except for Warhorde. Yeah, they've really gone away from the 2 CP strats in the game. Yeah. All right, Clank and Claws. Fight phase, an Orc Walker unit from your army has not been selected to fight yet. Every time you use this stratagem, you can choose to push it. Push it! Push Until it the faster, end of the phase, add more. two to the strength characteristic of melee weapons equipped by models in your unit. And if you chose to push it, plus one damage, and they get hazardous. Push it! <laughs> push it! <laughs> so this gives you hazardous, your detachment rule gives you double hazardous, and then your plus one damage, and you can just pick which rule you want. That's I right. love it. I love Sustained, it. lethal, plus two strength, plus one damage. All of a sudden, things actually start to hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so that that is pretty pretty good for doing damage in combat with Killikans, the unit that's kind of anemic in combat, and you're like, clanking claws, and they're like... <laughs> Excuse you. Super-fueled boiler. In your movement phase, just after an Orc Walker unit has been selected to advance, um, one CP, you can reroll advance rolls, and ranged weapons equipped by models in your unit have assault. You know when it's really helpful to reroll advance rolls? When you have advance and charge. Yes, uh, you... Yeah, that no, that's, turn, that's you know, pretty that, good. That army rule was still on the wall turn. You advance, shoot, and charge, and reroll advances. And and clanking claws. <laughs> clanking claws. A clanking claws is that's a hell of a rule. Yeah. Bigger shells for bigger gets. Very simple minds, these orcs. <laughs> Effective though. I like the way they think. In your shooting phase, you pick a mech, orc walker, or grot vehicle unit. So it's basically anything that benefits from the detachment. Each time you use this stratagem, you can choose to push it. <laughs> Until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack on target monsters or vehicles, plus one to wound. And if you choose to push it, plus one damage. Oh my god. And you get hazard. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Sustain it. Sleet lid. Plus one damage. Plus one damage. Yep. <laughs> oh Are god. you ready for plus one to wound, sustained hits, plus one damage rocket launches? How many rules can we strap on a rocket that hits on a five? Don't worry, there's more. <laughs> also, they hit on fours. Oh, even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's more. Don't worry, they might kill themselves after they're done. Yeah, but they're definitely killing you. <laughs> yeah, that's... uh. Hell of a strat. We're getting there. It's a battle tactic, and thank God there's no way to double it. Can you imagine if, like, 12 rocket launches just were like, brat, brat, brat. Well, actually, I can't imagine. I'd be on the side of the rocket launches. That's true. All right, daka, daka, daka. One orc walker or grot vehicle unit from your army, not mech this time. Each time you use this stratagem, let me guess, you can push it. You can push it. <laughs> Until the end of the phase, every time a model in the unit makes an attack, reroll a hit roll of one. 
if you push it, you can re-roll the hit roll instead and you get hazardous. Wait a second. So you can re-roll your hits, choose like sustain lethal, whatever you want, plus one of them, plus one damage, ignore his cover, advance and shoot, advance and charge, clank him. But wait, there's more! It can't be more, Jack. I spent all my CP. <laughs> the, no, the Killer Can's data sheet can also push it for <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty. If you stack all these buffs on something, they will just shoot the emperor in half himself. Like it doesn't matter. Oh my god. So is there more strats or is that up to this? No, that was four, buddy. That's four. Was the... <laughs> oh, no. Conniving runs. Uh, one CP when an enemy unit ends a normal advance or fallback move within nine of Gretchen. On a four up, <laughs> they suffer D three plus one mortal wounds, and then your unit makes a normal move. The Grot unit? Yeah, the Gretchen unit. Gretchen unit. Which is... Grot tanks, Grots, not Gretchen. The keywords are weird. Yes. So what this means is if they get in range of your Gretchen, which, by the way, in this detachment, get battle line. I forgot to mention that. Ooh. Um, if they get within range of your Gretchen, you go plat on a four up, and then you move. That's nice. I mean, just moving element of that is already, like, most strats, and then... Ah, mortals. Right. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a bit better version of the move reactive move strat, which is already one of the best strats in the game. I don't want to ever spend CP on the strat though, because I want to spend them all on the first four. That's true. All right, extra gubbins. Your opponent's shooting face just after they've selected their targets. Now you're going to spend your CP on this actually. Now oh that God, I mention Jack. it, yeah, no, you're going <laughs> to. This is the best strat from the detachment. No. <laughs> Can you push it? No, but you don't need to. <laughs> uh, one CP in your opponent's shooting face just after they selected their targets. A walker or grot vehicle unit from your army that was selected as the target. One CP minus one damage. Minus one damage on your killer cans and your dreadnoughts. This seems good. This yeah, seems good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, that's. Uh, well, I know I'm spending all the CP in my turn for offense, and the CP I gain in your turn gets spent on this. Yeah, that sounds like what cards are for. Just oh. ditch one of them every turn. What, what are we doing? Yeah, it's, this is the jack plan. Ditch the score tactical cards that you can actually score to fund your killer cans. It'll work. <laughs> It'll work, man. <laughs> so, Grot vehicles, really good in this detachment. We're looking at Grot tanks, which have a reactive move if you get within nine inches of them natively. Oh. It's six inches. They just do it each, each unit. Pretty gross. Uh, eight man units get 10 rocket launchers a piece. That's a good unit. Uh, and then Killer Cans, also a good unit. They have Clanking Claws. They have Clanking Claws. They have Clanking Claws. I mean, they have so Clanking We'll go through all the data sheets that changed. Killer Cans definitely changed. They did. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about how you can combo all this together. But in my mind, this, this Orc Army is hilarious. This Orc Army is fun. This might be either way too powerful or still not good enough. And I truly have no idea which one. I suspect that when you shoot your opponent with 40 to 50 rockets that have these buffs every turn, I suspect it will be pretty good. It will be pretty good. I think there, there is an element of like it will try to kill itself, so there, you know, how fast is that rate of killing itself compared to how fast you die? when yeah. your opponent attacks you back. Um, and also, these are all strats, so as much as we're, we're working the, the theoretical Art of War studio here where we can just spam every strat every turn, Listen, can, can, can we actually do that? That's I'm a discarding question. a card every turn for this. That's three strats a turn, about a round, and I'm doing them. We do know that's true. So now there, it remains to be seen. I'm excited about this detachment. Yeah, no, oh, that detachment seems really good, and the fact that you can have two credible Grot tank units is really strong. Yeah, and they're not that expensive, the Grot yep. tanks. So you yeah. can go over rule of three, because mm -hmm. you have Grot tanks and you have killer cans. Mm -hmm. All right, Green Tide. Ah, the classic, the put 180 boys on the table and call log at your opponent. I'm curious to see what kind of flavor they put into this one. All right, so the detachment rule is mob mentality. They just got a different mentality, bro. You just don't understand They don't mentality. shoot the bigger ones with the bigger shells. No, they have a mob. They have a mob. They have a mob. <laughs> Every time an, an attack targets a boys unit from your army, and that is just boys. Nothing else has that keyword. It's just the boys unit. Let me be clear. Storm boys, they're not boys. Slo uh, the Beast Naga boys? Also not boys. Somehow, I don't know, Burner Boys, not boys, but regular boys, B-O-Y-Z, they're boys. They're boys. So every time an attack targets a boys unit, models in that unit get a five of pinball all the time. Every attack, melee, shooting, doesn't matter. It's like a quarter of your log right there, all game. That's right. In addition, each time an attack targets an orcs unit from your army, if it contains ten or more models, reroll a saving throw of one against that attack. Which 
Does yes mean we can have a two up rerollable save back in the game? How do we do that? Uh, there is a way to make a Mega Noms unit count as above 10 models. Mega Noms aren't boys though. That, no, no, the second part just applies to all orcs. Oh, oh, very nice. So reroll on ones on your saves. That's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. It's very good with the two up invul. <laughs> it's very good, uh, very good with the two up save. Now, you, the only two up invul in the book, Makari, thankfully, <laughs> cannot reroll his invul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bring him back to seventh edition. <laughs> That's right. And a two up save with rerolling ones is pretty damn good, but at least you can make it not a two up anymore. Right, so But there is that combo in there. Speaking That's, of which, let's get to enhancements. Reroll ones is just a good rule. Reroll ones is just reroll ones to save. Great rule, especially when you have an invuln, so you know your opponent can't just say, "Hey, you don't get a save." Yeah, it basically, it's an eight percent increase on your save there. Exactly, and it's better if your save gets better. Yeah. All right, enhancements. We got a ferocious show off. Uh, orcs infantry model only. Each time the bear fights, they get plus one strength, and if the bear's unit contains ten or more models. When resolving those attacks, plus three strength instead. Well, we're really seeing a theme here. They want those larger units. <laughs> there will be other rules that reference ten or more models in this attachment, Nick. So what's interesting with bullies is you can just take ten, or you can take twenty. Yeah, <laughs> you can. <laughs> and you can teleport them around. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, that still exists. Yeah, some more boss smacking with plus three attacks is not what I want to see here. No, it's plus three strength. Plus three strength. It's not as good as plus three okay. attacks. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, brutal but cunning, or can infantry model only in your command phase if they're on the battlefield or within a transport that's on the battlefield, which they've really added that in, by the way, I didn't mention it, but they've added in a bunch of rules that say, or in a transport, which is great, because otherwise transports don't work. If they are on the battlefield or in a transport, roll a dice, adding two to the result if the bear's unit contains ten or more models. On a five up, you get a CP. Works are really on it with your theme. You know, yeah. This one's about the cans, this one's about the big squads. They don't mess around. No, they don't mess around. And Gretchen can give you a CP on a four up, so you can stack multiple effects to just make sure you get your CP every oh, turn. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They, for every objective that has Gretchen, you get a four up. That's cool. And you get a CP if you get it. Uh, bloodthirsty belligerence. While your bear is leading a unit, reroll advance rolls for that unit. While that unit contains 10 or more models, you reroll charges as well. Reroll advances and reroll charges when you can advance and charge, that's a lot of faster. It is. It is. It's uh, It's all right. It's, it's not It's going to come down to points. It's going to come down to points. Yeah. If it's cheap, you take it. If it's not, you don't. Yeah. But the thing you do take, basically all the time, is Raucous Warcaller. Uh, orc infantry model only while the bear is leading a unit. That unit always counts as containing 10 or more models for the purposes of your detachment rule and any stratagems you use. Now we're talking, so we can just get shot. 20 orcs becomes 9. Life is sad, but not anymore. Nope, you're still a 10-man. And But keep in mind, this can go on a unit that was never a 10-man unit, and mm -hmm. they still count as being 10 or more. Oh. And then AP 0, AP 1 with cover, you're getting a 2 of pre-rollable. Man, it feels like I'm back in 7th. Uh, oh, it's great. Man, this is not what I wanted to hear. Yeah, now, oh. I, I don't think this is like a broken combo at all, but it is quite good. I think if you don't have the tools to handle... The AP, it's going to feel to you like it might be broken, but in the context of the game, a lot of things can deal with that. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, you can also have a character in there that reses a model every turn. Oh, it's like that, playing orc stodies. That's, that's <laughs> right. They might get another buff. We'll talk about it. Interesting. Why do they release these two books on the same day? <laughs> anyway, back to it. <laughs> All right, competitive streak. Uh, again, all the strats are one CP, which mm -hmm. is super good for this detachment. Just keep the strats flowing. Competitive streak in the fight phase, a boys unit from your army that has not been selected to fight. Uh, if you uh, you get a reroll once to wound, and if you're a 10 man or more unit, reroll wounds. That's really good. Boys reroll on the wound. Boys <laughs> reroll on the wound hurts really bad. <laughs> yeah, boys have low strength, million attacks. What do they want to make those hurt? Rerolling the wound. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. But I can only reroll to wound if it's a huge unit and it's about to wreck your life. I think that's the point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bulldozer brutality. One CP in the fight phase. One boys unit from your army that has not been selected to fight this phase and is within engage range of one or more enemy units. Each time your unit is selected to fight, any models that are within three inches of one or more enemy models are eligible to fight. So this is basically an extension to your engagement range. Instead of having the models within base to base of your opponent and within base to base of that model being the eligibility, it's models within three inches 
to be eligible to fight. So your 20 man units, it's hard to get all 20 dudes fighting one target or two targets. It's really a lot of bases there, but with this rule, you're gonna be fighting. It's a lot easier. Yeah, this functionally means you get to fight an extra rank. Right. Because you got base to base, and then you had base to base of them, and now you have three inches. Yeah, which, you know, three three ranks deep is like significantly more. Yeah, it's the whole unit. It's the whole unit that's gonna fight you. Yeah. That's right. And um, especially in the, like the smaller bases, like imagine 20 works trying to fight a little itty bitty Nightbringer 40 mil Meter, this is going to be huge, really nice. especially when you real wounds against the Nightbringer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's nice here is they didn't make it extend engagement range to three inches, so all sorts of rules get really funky with that. They just said you're eligible to fight. Right. I like that clean, yeah. clean transition from a rules perspective. Bragan writes in your command phase, two boys' units that are within six inches of each other. Uh, while those two units are within six inches, they each count as containing ten or more models for the purpose of your detachment rule and any enhancements and any stratagems. That, you know, so now we've got the relic to count a unit as 10, now we've got the strat to pick it up. You can actually use your rules even as the game goes on and you lose your bodies. That's right. And this targets two units. I think one unit wouldn't have been enough. Enough. Because it's like you spend the strat to make a unit 10 man, and then you don't have a CP to use the strat you want to use once you're a 10 man. Yeah, it, it would be a perfect time to have a half CP cost, yeah. but not that I want that to ever exist. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> uh, they do have to be near each other in your command phase, so you have to strategically pull models to leave them within range of each other, but as you get wounded, you can still get your your rules. All right, one CP, come on, lads. Uh, sorry, hold on. One CP, come on, lads. All right, it's not funny. <laughs> All right, one CP, come on, lads. In your command phase, you target a boy's unit from your army, and you restore D3 plus two destroyed models to your unit, other than characters. Healing models in high OC toward units is already a good thing, like fundamentally, and now there's like built-in synergies with it. Yep, this is really good when you've been shot back behind a wall, you just res onto the objective and take it, mm -hmm. and then you get those points for the uh, command phase. It's really strong. These are some tactics that we'd be teaching in the war. You can yeah. get your three-day free trial below, the TV and Catch Jack's or game. That's right, right. Live today. There's going to be a, there's a game going live today and then there's going to be more games uh, right. as things go forward because I am super excited about Several of these detachments. <laughs> Every detachment. I'm an orc. I'm a squid card player. player. I'm a dream orc player. Stuff now. <laughs> this might be the funniest strat coming up in the entire book so far. Mm -hmm. Funnier what? than the grad attack? It might be. It might be. Depends on your sense of humor. All right. Tide of muscle. One boy's unit is not declared a charge yet. Until the end of the phase, each time your unit declares a charge, Add the current battle round number to the charge result. Oh, so I love these kinds of rules. Because it doesn't sound that powerful, right? You're like, it doesn't even get good until turn five. No. Plus two to charge happens on turn two. Plus two to charge is a great rule. Plus three, you're not villain. Plus five, now we're doing YOLO jump plays on bottom of turn five to swing like 20 secondary and primary points, and now we're plus five to charge. Yeah, so like a 20 man just gets duh jumped and then makes a... <clears throat> Four inch charge, yeah. but they actually get to move super far. I mean, even if we're not waiting till turn five to do this, wait till turn three, you orc players, and they'll just be like, I have a rerollable six into your army with 20 boys. Yes. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> your objectives, they're my objectives now. Not only is this amazing because obviously you can make easy, shorter charges out of deep striking and stuff, but your opponent is under constant threat of like, oh, I can just get charged out of reserves. I'm going to have to screen. And when your opponent is screening, they're coming closer to you and giving you natural charges. Yes. And it's not a problem that gets better as time goes on. <laughs> Plus four to charge is going to be pretty nuts on turn four. Yeah. We got one more. Was more. Go get them. <laughs> Wasn't that go get them? <laughs> no, that's tide of muscle. How does this make any sense? I don't know. <laughs> go get them. Your opponent's shooting phase after an enemy has selected its targets. One boy's unit was selected as the target. Uh, after they have shot, your unit can make a go get them move. To do so, roll 1d6. Each model in your unit can move a distance in inches up to the result, and you have to go as close as possible. Yes, you can be moved within engagement range, and if you contain 10 or more models, you move up to 6. So you're saying orcs blood surge now, and automatically 6 inches if you're like doing the thing your detachment tells you to do? Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Okay, so... Now, the counterplay to this is if they shoot you below 10, you only get to go d6. But if they don't, and oh. you have an invuln, you go six, and you can move into engagement range of your opponent. This detachment seems actually quite good to me. I initially read it, and I was like, this isn't that good. 
these are just boys, but having that re-read it with these contexts, it's pretty good. I actually think Green Tide is really strong. It's really strong. Yes, it only applies to boys, but once you get over that hump, you have 120 dudes who get bonuses to charge, re-rolls uh, to wound, you get to resurrect models, you get to charge out of getting de jumped, get into combat, re-roll wounds, steal every objective on the board, and then after that, on your opponent's next turn, if they don't deal with 20 boys in one go, you just blood surge into combat with them. But yeah, go get them. Your opponent has to navigate. This is a repeatable thing you can do every single turn. You jump a unit, bonus to charge, re-roll if necessary, charge with a 20 man. Then you touch a bunch of stuff, you get all up in your opponent's business, and then if they don't address you properly, and you do have a five up invuln, and you are rerolling once on your invulns, if they don't address you properly, you just blood surge into combat with them and tell them their turn doesn't happen anymore. The game's and just over. The game's point. just over, but don't worry, you have another unit ready to jump and charge the yeah, following turn. It's just going to keep on happening. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> so... I might know what Orc Army I'm playing in our debut game. <laughs> hmm. We shall see. Yes. Live Wednesday on YouTube. <laughs> That's right. So that, I mean, that detachment seems quite strong. That's awesome. I love that yeah. detachment. We've got Bully Boys. You also have a two up rerollable saving in that detachment as well. So when that, as we get to Bully Boys here, I need to take a minute to diatribe for a second. Because Mr. Jack has been... Has been going off about how he's a squig hog player, and then he was a grot tank player, and then he was a green horde player. He's lying to you all. This is Jack's detachment. This right here. You just, if, you, if your shtick is being tough, jamming your opponent, being like, ah, ha, 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 pressure, um, this is for you. I, I might have been <laughs> going off a bit about the Bully Boys detachment uh, over the last couple days. It seems... Yeah, well, we'll get into it. Let's uh, <laughs> just, just go with that. <laughs> All right, so detachment roll is the boss is watching. At the start of a battle round in which you have not called the wall, if you have one or more war boss models on the battlefield or embarked on a transport on the battlefield, you can call a wall for a second time. And when doing so, that second wall only counts as having been called for, oh, like, probably no units. It's only any unit containing a war boss, any unit with knobs. Any unit with Mega Knobs. Sick. You know what can get the War Boss keyword? Um, like any unit in the Orc Army joined by a War Boss? Bingo! Oh. And so, any unit joined by a Beast Boss. Okay, so your Orc Army is just going to spend two turns, whether it's turn one and two or turns two and three, depends on the user, but you know, it's going to spend two turns of the five up in full advance and charge plus one strength plus one attack. Yeah. Pretty much the whole thing. And I'm just going to say, Mega knobs get a lot better on the Wah turn. They got a hell of an upgrade. Oh, don't don't spoil it. But no, we're not, I'm not spoiling it. But what, maybe, you might run 18 Mega You're knobs gonna here, probably right? run 18 You might just run 18 Mega knobs. If they get double Wah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. We'll cover that when we get to Mega knobs. But on the Wah turn, they're quite frankly ridiculous. So uh, well, you know, you get two of those. It's fine. Don't okay. worry about it. So you know how like some work attachments are like you can advance and shoot with your war bikers. What if you just wad twice? Like the, yeah. the game defining thing that work players center their strategy around. You know, we talk about how going second is bad because you don't know when to wad. Just wad twice. You just wad twice. Wad twice. Think about it like uh, like Montca out of Tau, right? You're you're probably not using Montca's rules on turn one. It's turn one. You're both setting up. Turns two and three, you get lethal hits and you get to advance and shoot. That's pretty solid. What do we get as orc players? Probably, oh, an invuln, plus one attack, plus one strength, and advance and charge. So we're probably not doing it on turn one, but we're probably doing it turns two and three. And then after that, game's kind of decided. But it's okay. There's more. <laughs> there is more. Uh, teleporta. Warboss and Mega Armor only models in the Bears unit have Deep Strike, which is super good for Mega Knobs because yeah. they don't have Deep Strike Move natively. Five units really like Deep Strike, really like Rapid Ingress, really like getting into the opponent. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they'll they get in for sure. Yeah. Having having one unit to Rapid Ingress on turn two is massive for pressure armies. Yeah, and then it forces those screens, which means the stuff you have on the board have something to interact with. That's right. All right, so that's great. It only goes on war bosses, but I really like war bosses. Well, I must say this, this thing is like 50 points you are taking. It. Yeah. Yeah. Big gob. Big gob. Big gob. Infantry war boss model only. At the start of the fight phase, select one enemy unit within engage range of the bear. They have to take a battle shock at minus one. This actually pretty good. And here's the reason why. 
It applies when your opponent charges you. Oh. Yes. Start of the fight phase, pick an enemy unit with an engage or range. Now, it has to be an engage range of the bearer, mm -hmm. not the bearer's unit. Mm -hmm. But if your opponent charges you, it's pretty easy to make them have to do it. And yeah. then they get in, they're like, I'm going to be Lance and plus one AP. No, no you're not. Yeah. <laughs> it's also nice just because there's a lot of fight phase interactions that orcs will try to put on your opponent. They could interrupt on you. They could CP reroll save. They could do whatever. They can they fight could, on death. They can fight on death. You they know, like minus one damage. Different factions have all kinds of things to help them out through the fight phase, which you as the orc player are trying to make them fight you. Um, so being able to, oops, you can't do that, um, at minus one is pretty nice. Yeah, but don't worry. You can only take this on a war boss in knobs or mega knobs. Taking Battle Shock at minus one, they can't auto pass, they can't do anything, they just, oops, you don't get your strats. Very great, strong. Effect. Great timing for a good roll. Yep, and it, it really messes with your opponent's ability to guarantee that plays work. Yeah, like in, in competitive Warhammer, especially as you get higher and higher up that ladder, you really want to try to remove the volatility that dice can have and impact on your game by just over committing and being sure of your plans. Oops, you failed the battle shot. Orcs! Orcs. <laughs> the biggest boss. Infantry war boss only, plus two to the bear's wounds. It's all right. It's not the biggest deal. You're, if, they've killed, if they've gotten your war boss, it's because they've killed the unit that the war boss is attached to, and then I'm sad about that. Yeah. Um, so probably, I mean, the other two have been great, and uh, spoiler alert, I believe the last one is also pretty great, so this one's not. You only take three enhancements. Who cares? I didn't even know that was a rule. It, it is. It is. Strike that. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Stompa. Infantry war boss model only. Each time the bearer makes an attack that targets a unit below its starting strength, reroll wound rolls of one. If that unit is below half, you can reroll wound rolls. It makes the bear a bit better. Yeah, I mean, targeting units that are below half strength is a hard thing to set up, so you're not really rerolling wounds. But especially really not wounds in orcs. Yeah. Orcs don't really have good shoes, especially not this detachment. Yeah, it's like you hit something and it survived, and the next turn you can be below half, but that's a rare thing. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, this isn't that great. You have to target units that's below starting strength to reroll wound rolls of one for the bearer only. Screw this thing. Yeah. Uh, but Big Gob and Teleporta, mwah! Armed to Datif. In your shooting phase or the fight phase, I believe, yes, all of these are also 1 CP. Efficiency! Works. <laughs> Armed to Datif. One knobs or mega knobs unit that has not been selected to shoot or fight yet. Each time they make an attack, reroll hit rolls. If a WA is active for your unit, you can reroll a uh, reroll hit rolls of one. If a WA is active, you can reroll the hit roll instead. That's pretty good. That's, That's pretty good. Reroll hits on the walk. Hmm. Wonder, wonder what that is a useful ability. Yeah, double, double wah. <laughs> double wah. <laughs> so you plus one attack, plus one strength. If only you could hit the oh. Oops. Oh, wow. If only you were more durable, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> Too arrogant to die. One CP, your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase after an enemy has selected its targets. One knobs or mega knobs unit from your army that was selected as the target of one of the attacks. Until the end of the phase, each time model unit is destroyed, if the model has not shot or fought on a 5-up, they fight on death. And if you're in the WA, plus 2. So, if you're in 2 out of 5 battle rounds of the game, with which you get to choose, you fight on death on 3+. plus. With yes. your mega knobs and your war bosses and your good punchy orc people. Yes. And something I feel like needs to be mentioned right now is that squig hogs attached by a squig boss... Our war, our, our war, war boss, boss key units. Word. Yeah, so basically, you, you take like Mazrog or the war boss on the Squigus one, you join them to, again, the eight man Squig unit, and uh, they, they get all these rules. They get a second WA! Now, uh, they uh, don't actually, they don't get any of the enhancements, and they don't get any of the strats so far. Because, because they're only infantry characters. And knobs slash mega knobs, but what they do get is a second wa. Right. So it's not like an entirely synergistic attachment for squig hogs and those things, but you know, a second wa is quite the buff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's far it's far good. Yeah. It's also a zero CP buff. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. So always looking for a fight one CP after an enemy unit is destroyed, you get a consolidation of D three plus three instead of three, and if it's a wa, you get six. You see why I said this is your detachment. Jack, always looking for a fight every single time. Always looking Drive for a fight. Drive the whirlwind into their deployment zone. Let's go. Let's go. 
<laughs> charged with it. I tank shocked with my whirlwind several times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Crushing impact. There it is. <laughs> Crushing impact. Your charge phase is after a knobs or mega knobs unit from your army ends a charge move. You pick an enemy unit with engage range and roll a d6 for every model in your unit that is within engage range of that enemy unit. So this one does not work like the last one we talked about. Last one is just roll for every model in the unit. This one, every model in engage range. So this is kind of the bad version where it's the guys that actually get into combat on the initial charge. You can't use that pile under just the length of your unit to... Yep. And you can't base to base. It's only people within an inch. <sighs> For every five up, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. If the WA is active, it's a four up. Still, charged mortals are good in the right scenario. You know, this is like another grenade strat type thing. This is pretty good, but this is certainly not something you're using all the time. No, no, and it's only knobs and mega knobs. If you take a ten man knob unit, you're killing your opponent anyway. Yeah. Like, especially on the wall, this is not that great, but that's okay. We have other good strats. Cut them down. One CP in your opponent's movement phase just after an enemy is falling back from a knobs or mega knobs unit. They have to take desperate escape test for every model in their unit, and if you have the wall up, they're minus one to that desperate escape roll. When would you possibly have the log up in this detachment? Yeah, so 50% of your unit dies when you fall back. Yeah, you can do things like one CP, consolidate into like a squad of Wraith Guard or something of that nature, eradicators. Anything that's that big consolidate strat. Yeah, yeah. With the big consolidate. And then when your opponent goes to fall back, you go, you die on a one, two, or a three. Or they could stay in combat with your mega knobs. Yeah, that would be a, a misplay. Oh boy. Yeah. So that's pretty good if you want to just like get around a super tough unit, a squad of terminators, you barely tag the end of it. And you just go, all right, you swing on me with like six attacks, eight, mm -hmm. eight attacks or whatever. And then they go to fall back, you're like five Terminators die. This also, Could be more, by the way, if they just roll bad. The armies in the game that have access to fall back and do stuff, um, it's a fantastic rule. It's a, it's a great rule specifically against orcs because you can just get engaged all the time and act normally. Now you're dying when you're yes. using that rule. And this is, by the way... You can use this on any enemy unit. Does not require. You can kill a knight with 50 -50, this. 50 50, kill the knight. <laughs> yeah. Guess that knight's staying in combat. <laughs> yep. Now your opponent can always CP reroll the desk for breakout for a mere 25% chance to lose your knight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> any unit will have to take the desperate escape because you will cut down that Lord of Skulls if they fall back. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it only targets one enemy unit. It doesn't target your unit, so you can't tag like five units and do this to them, but still it is pretty gross. One CP would be like, hey, half your Terminators, it might be more, you don't know, you might roll seven ones, twos, and threes and lose your whole squad to this. Yeah. That would be pretty bad. I'm not a big fan of this. No, no, that would be, that's, I'm using that every time. Oh. Alright, Hulking Brutes is the last strat. Your opponent's shooting phase just after an enemy has selected its targets, one knobs or mega knobs unit from your army, it's Armor of Contempt. That seems good. Armor of Contempt, only in shooting, only in knobs and mega knobs. Don't care, I love it. Yeah, you put it on the mega knobs, the mega knobs sit in the cover saves, you get the zero up armor save combo, and then you just, you know... You're then they might have additional durability as well. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so that detachment seems really good. It is largely carried by a gross detachment rule. Yeah, I mean, the, the detachment strats are actually kind of lackluster as a whole. Some of them are very good, but, you know, nothing to ride home about in a vacuum. The, the double log, though, is such an army-defining rule. Like, yeah. It's amazing. It lets you have that initial hit and then a very good follow-up turn. And it buffs units that are very synergistic with each other in that they all want to go forward, be hyper durable, yeah. bully your opponent, bully boys your opponent out of the center of the board. It's very clear in its direction. And the fact that Mega Nob's got a pretty sick data sheet buff, which we'll cover later, um, really takes this detachment up to 11. Yeah, and the durability in the detachment, along with the speed, really means that even if your opponent does kill you, which is not easy to do. No, you have two up armor saves on those mega knobs, you got armor contempt, you got five invuls for two turns on your squig hogs. It is tough. It is very, very tough. Squigs have a five up feel no pain. Maybe other models have a better feel no pain, who can say. Um, your army's going to be so durable, so tough to get out of the center of the, of the board that by the time your opponent's done it, if they've won that fight, you have every point on the board. Like, they're not taking the dejectors away from you. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to putting some bully boys down on the table. So we've gone through all the detachments now, and 
In my opinion, I think this Billy Buddies one is the strongest one, but you know there are a lot of gems here. That Grot one I think is hilarious. The Green Tide I think is very solid. And that Beast Hunter thing, I don't think it's the best one, but it's got some interesting stuff. It's got some interesting stuff. I think Squig Hogs are better served in Bully Boys. Yeah. Because they have additional the units that want to do the same thing, whereas in Squig... Where in the Great Hunt, they, they don't. Yeah, you're just taking Beast Nagas to supplement it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there's three detachments, even four, I, I am excited about Great Hunt, that I am excited to start list building with, to start putting on the table, to start finding out all the tricks and traps and everything. Yeah. Um, I just need to decide what I bully boys Nick with first, or if I green tide at him. That's no. that's then then you know obviously do I grot tanks you like probably I, I'm grot tanking you Jack <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Green Tide and Bully Boys both look insanely sick for yeah. that melee play style I think they're both all sort of different roles within teams if you're interested in teams 40k like the the Orc Horde Bully uh, Green Tide is got a very high points floor right it's 120 OC two bodies that just pressure 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 whereas like the Bully Boys thing might just table you yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two different approaches, but still like very great results. Yep. And Bully Boy is a very linear game plan, but like uh, it's up to you to stop it, Jack man. Loves it's the hard. Linear game plans forward for the Emperor. Yep. <laughs> There's something very strong about a linear game plan executed well as opposed to executed poorly um, that just makes it uniquely hard to stop. That's true. But uh, I want to just take a second and say this is pro it's not even probably, this is definitely the most well designed suite of detachments they've released so far. Yeah, they got four out of five <clears throat> hits here. I mean, three of them are like awesome, very thematic, super on the ball with what they're trying to do. The Beast Hunter one is very interesting. It definitely helped goes in line with the units it's trying to support. I think Speed Freaks was a bit of a miss. I wish they ramped up the damage, but if you ramp up the damage, it ends up being too powerful. So it's like maybe they could have redesigned it a little bit to not be so binary, too strong or not too strong. But, you know, four out of five is a great number. I do think if you want to run, I think if you want to run Speed Freaks, I think you could do well with the Speed Freaks detachment. I don't think it's like I, I don't think it's like you know, several of the Custodes detachments where they just don't do anything. No, no, no. This is a mediocre detachment that actually still does what you want it to do. Right, You right. can absolutely play with it. Yeah, if you're interested in Speed Freaks, you have good rules. You have good stuff going on. It's certainly not useless. It's all just contextual next to like the Bully Boys. Yeah, and I, they really did a good job of making sure Every detachment has a unique play style. The play style is fully fleshed out and supported. You can, it makes a completely different army. It's super cool. I'm very excited. I don't even know, I'm kind of overwhelmed with this, to be honest. Yeah, it's an overwhelming book. I think part of that is also that there's so many data sheets in the orc range that you can, you have the freedom as a codex writer to really go this direction, that direction, this direction. Whereas like an army like Custodes, yeah, eight, 10 data sheets and they're all kind of dudes wearing gold armor. You know, yeah, how much can you do yeah. with that? All right, well, speaking of data sheets, mm -hmm. how about we get uh, get right into it? The first one is Gazgul Thraka himself. So Gazgul is um, already really good. He's really good in Bully Boys. Uh, he's just really good in several different uh, detachments. But he got a bit of an upgrade. So he is exactly the same, as far as I can tell, except Instead of plus one to hit and wound to his unit, he gives you plus one to hit wound and critical fives. Huh. I wonder where critical fives could could maybe trigger with re-rolling hits in the bully boys. Bully or... boys, as far as I know, have no way to get sustained or lethal on their attacks. Oh, so it's like other a than the once a game uh, twelve inch aura off of Gazgul. Oh wait, that synergizes a little bit. Wait, so Gaz gives his units crit fives, and then he gives a twelve inch aura of lethal hits. Yeah, it's only once a game though. He gives out the twelve inch aura of lethal hits. It's only on any turn he called a wa. So you know. Yeah, if only you could do that twice. Interesting. Right. But you know, the boss, <laughs> right. the boss is watching. You're going to put Gaz in the Bully Boys arm. A hundred percent. Double lethal hits aura is bananas, and then having crit fives on his unit in addition to plus one to hit, plus one to wound, and having a really, really nasty stat line himself. 
the Gaz Ghoul is just, he's in there. I think Gaz is one of those iconic orc characters. I kind of like when he's an orc list. I, I don't mind if he's too strong. Like, because he's not, he's not going to break the game open by himself. He still moves kind of slow and he's not fly or anything. So, like, if he's just really awesome and every orc army includes him, I'm so about that. He's great. Gaz. He, he is infantry. He does go through walls. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I just want you, to, <laughs> want you to noodle on that one. So, I'm, I'm excited. I like Gaz. I, th I still think the War Horde is, is a good detachment, too. I think the, like, yeah. the initial one, you'll probably play. Also. The squig ones get sustained and crit fives against their target, so you can get sustained lethal fives in in that from Gasgul. Yeah, Gasgul's is great. In all he, of them. He's going in. At least he's being considered if he's not auto include. Exactly. So we got some more changes. We've got uh, the mega boss. Yep, war boss in mega armor, who is really good in bully boys. Not gonna lie to you. Uh, he went from I believe during a wa he has a four up feel no pain. He went from that. Uh, don't worry, that rule did not go anywhere. It's it's still around. Um, uh, when you call Wah, he gets damage three on his huge choppa. Yeah, for whatever reason, the ore characters kind of tap out at damage two on most of their attacks, and it's kind of soft, but not anymore. Nope, he is on Wah turn. He's going to be five attacks at strength 13, damage three. AP2 only. But still, that is a pretty nasty melee profile, and he also he still gives his unit plus one to hit like every war boss does. And it's not like you can only call the log once or anything. Oh. Next up, we got uh, Big Max. So Big Max, they consolidated a bunch into one profile. We've got the Big Mech in Mega Armor, who is basically exactly the same, but he does restore a destroyed bodyguard model every turn to a Mega Knobs unit. Mega Knobs unit. That's interesting. Interesting. Fun fact, when you restore dead models to units, not only are you adding a Mega Knob that your opponent worked very hard to destroy, you are also adding plus four inches to your charge. That's right, because you res it two inches forward, and then it has a base that's almost two inches. Huh. Yeah, it's uh, pretty far. I think this guy with the reroll ones to save thing is pretty dang good. His other buff is reeling hit rolls of one for his unit in ranged attacks. Not great. But for a unit that's trying to be durable, it's pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, Big Mech, not in Mega Armor, they consolidate a bunch of profiles together. He has a very funny gun, the Tracta Blasta. <laughs> one shot, strength 10, AP2 damage, D6 plus one, hits on a five, anti fly, three plus dev wounds. You know I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything that'll kill a flyer. He also teleports his unit around because he rerolls advance rolls for the unit, and every time his unit makes a normal advance or fallback, they move horizontally through models and terrain features. That's a weirdly useful rule. It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, so uh, the teleporty blast, as cool as it is, hitting on a five with one shot is just not it. But moving horizontally through models means you're not getting mood blocked, at least not nearly as effectively, and you're not getting like, oops, cargo container blocked. You, you exactly. can go right through that. You can go car through cargo containers. It's one of the only ways to do it. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not getting fly, yeah. where you'd have to go, so you're just going through. Obviously, not alternative formats or local stores have things that necessarily care about. The lot of tables are all ruins all the time where it's going to lose value. But if you're playing at WTC or some other formats which have obstacles, um, that's that rule goes up in stock. Yeah. He's not bad in combat either. He gets a power claw or a drilla. Mm -hmm. Drilla is two attacks, but three in the wah. At 12, goes strength 13, AP 3, damage 3. Mm -hmm. So that's not bad. All right, next up is, I believe, the, the beast, beast boss, boss on Squigasaur. On Squigasaur. This one changed. Quite a bit, actually, because now they're basically a leader for the unit. Yeah, so it's no longer a solo character with a 4-up feeling pain, super hard to kill 4-up, and well, now it's something else. That's right. So they went from toughness uh, 10 down to toughness 8, Ooh. 9 wounds down to 8, um, and it got, went from feeling pain 4 plus to feeling pain 5 plus. Now, I assume this means it will go down in cost, because <laughs> yeah, uh, its melee not. has not gotten any better. Um, I will say, leading a unit hopefully has a cost associated with it. <laughs> yes. Uh, while the model is leading a unit, you get plus one to charge. Mm -hmm. And you can target this model's unit with heroic intervention uh, stratagem for zero CP and can do so even if you've already targeted a different unit. Oh, I hate this. As and a... it's, it's not once a turn. If I have three units with three beast bosses, all three of them can zero CP heroic. Yeah, so you're playing a beast boss on Squig Asura Horde, nice Squig army, and like charging this thing is just hellish. You just, you're not really going to be able to unless you're charging back with like world leaders or something. It's just going to be a monster mesh. Exactly, exactly. And the fact that you can just, all three of them could theoretically heroic intervene off the same trigger. Oh my god. Yeah, so orcs Orcs are trying to win the combat wars, and you know, with Custodes changing in Archetype 2, they may have just done it. Yes. Uh, that. So that, that thing is can potentially be pretty big. It's definitely something your opponent has to worry about, and we'll see where the price point is to yeah. see what you do. But also, 
plus one to charge is not bad. And giving Warboss keyword to a unit is very relevant in Bully Boys. Yeah. I do like that it's a little bit less stupidly tough. I mean, Masrog and, and his buddy in the current work current rules are like already on my unkillable list. I'll focus on everything else. When they join the Squid God unit, I may have to kill it because it's like so many points. You can't just ignore that. But uh, at least he's a little bit less tough. Exactly. So I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan. I think you're definitely taking them if you take Squid Cogs because you need uh, that war boss keyword. Speaking of the Squid Cogs, our next change is Mr. Mazrog. So he also went to toughness 8 with 8 wounds and a feel no pain 5+. plus. While he's leading a unit, every time a model in that unit is destroyed, it fights on death on a 4+. plus. Squid Cogs. Yes. Uh, if it is not already fought, on a 4-up it fights. It's pretty pretty dang good. It's pretty good. It's not always good, like when you're playing Tau, you're not going to use that rule. But when you're, when you're playing a combat army, again, orcs are really dominating that space. Yep. And he lost his crit fives on the charge, crit fives to wound on the charge, mm -hmm. which was a significant part of his damage. Four up fight on death is not bad, and he still gets plus one damage against monsters and vehicles, and plus two against Titanic. And he's just another war boss leader for your squig hogs if you want to run two of these units or something. Exactly. If you want fight on death over free heroic and plus one to charge. He hits a little harder, actually significantly harder. It's it's a side grade. It's a side grade. It's, it's definitely side grade. slightly different usage for the same unit. Exactly. Um, but now we're getting to kind of more of the regular data sheet unit changes. So we've got good old fashioned orc boys. So orc boys changed. Uh, they their profile stayed the same. Um, you can still attach two leaders to it. Uh, if it's a 20-man unit, mm -hmm. one of them can be a war boss. One of them has to be a war boss if you attach two. That's still the same, but that is definitely something to mention for the twenty man for the green tide. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can get two characters. You two can characters get, doing a war boss and like a pain boy or something. It's really nice. It's really solid. Yeah, you can get a five up feel no pain on this unit. Let me just go to the. Let me go back to the pain boy really fast. Well, this boy's kind of but brutal over here. That's right. So pain boy, yes, can join boys, and yes, it does give the feel no pain five plus, and in the green tide they'll have a five up invuln. Yeah, that's big thinking, <laughs> thinking cap. I got going my thinking cap here. on. But they also got a data sheet change, which I had to check what their data sheet rule was because what, I was what like, "What was it?" Well, every unit in the game has one, so clearly theirs must be impactful. It was like if they were led by a war boss and they failed a battle shock, you can lose a model to re-roll it. Breaking eggs. Yeah. If they were led by a war boss, you're not doing that. <laughs> but instead, it has been replaced with a rule that might might be really, really valuable in the green tide. Yeah, sticky objectives. Sticky objectives. You know, we already talked about how great sticky objectives are, but it, it's great. It, it, it still is, and now it's, you just have it all it the time. It still is. Yeah, you don't have to spend a CP. You don't have to do anything. You end a turn on it with your gigantic tendrils of an army. And your 120 Sick. bodies on the objectives, guess what? Even if you manage to leave by accident, you will still have them. Yeah, three of those <laughs> units teleport. Don't worry about it. Three of those units have a five of field of pain. Also, don't worry about it. It's really nice for like having one 20 man screen like your entire backfield deployment zone for a few turns, and then like it's on its objective in your home field, you make it sticky already, and then you jump it across the table, and no one has to stand back and babysit. That's right. Yeah, sticky objectives is huge in that detachment. It's huge in a lot of detachments, actually. It's just great. It's just good. It's just great. Just, just, just pretty damn good. You know what else is good, Jack? We're here. We got there. It is time to reveal. The Mega Knobs. <laughs> yes. Mega Knobs. So we've been, uh, I've been hinting and alluding and hinting Just and alluding to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they have a rule called Crumpin' Time, which I think it was named the same thing, uh, which gave them dev wounds during the walk. That's not bad. Just not bad. It was twice. It was fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now it gives them a four up feel no pain for any battle run in which they any battle run in which they're affected by the wall. So instead of dead ones to help kill things, you just have four female pain. Now, I played with aberrants, which are three wound models with four female pain. I played against wardens, which are three model three wound models with four female pain and two whoop saves. And it's fun, right? They're like functionally unkillable. Like you can throw your kitchen sink at them, like literally all 2,000 points of your army, strats, relics, everything, they might die. And by they might die, I mean like six of them, one squad. One might squad die. might die. And then, because Wardens, you know, the, the great data sheet that they are, they do this once per game. And you have to pre-call it the start of a phase, and then if you don't target them, I lose it for the next phase. It has counterplay. But this is two battle rounds. Yeah, they just have a four field of pain. I thought Wraiths and Canoptic Court were tough. The four one miles of five and family pain. No, this is these are two saves. They have five of bindles. They have access to armor of contempt. They don't now, actually have a five of bindle, they just have a two save. Don't they get affected by the law? 
Okay. So then then you have four up feeling love pain too. And and this this is where I start to worry, but <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge just when it come to it. Yeah, I don't actually really know what you're supposed to do to keep mega knobs off of you. Move block, the only answer. My yeah, favorite answer. Infantry unit that advances and charges. Yeah. Oh, so, so mega knobs, folks. 18 of them. Sell them out right now. They're uh, they're pretty they're pretty damn good. I they're listen. We don't know what points they're going to end at. 70 I, per model is where I will accept this. That seems high. It should be. Um, <laughs> but I will tell you, they're 30 points right now. And in the back of this book, they're 30 points as well. Great. So that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. The Minotaur Field Manual is the final points holder. But at some print version of this codex, that, you know, they maybe 30 points. Yeah. Also... If you join these with a big mech in mega armor, they heal them all every every command phase. Plus four charge. Yep. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you do that versus having a war boss in mega armor. There are pros and cons to both. The unit without a war boss is kind of limp on terms of how hard it hits. Yeah. It does not hit very hard. I was hard. about to say the one saving grace about mega knobs is not their durability. They're they're freaking unkillable. But the 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 kill saw, and the power claw, they don't have that many attacks. They hit on threes and fours. So unless you're really investing a war boss to supplement that combat, it's not getting hit by yeah. custodies wardens. You know, yeah. it's okay. It uh, like kills twin kill saws, which is probably what you're going to see are two attacks base. Mm -hmm. They go to three. They hit on fours, so war boss bumps that to threes. You don't have a ton of buffs for it. Yeah. They are twin linked with high strength AP, only damage two. So their damage output is it's not bad. It's not terrible. I'm not gonna be sad about it. But it's not like killing anything in the game, whatever. It's it's a limited number of attacks, very few access to rerolls, two damage each. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll see how that how that plays out, but they are tough as nails. They're almost impossible to shift during wall turn, and you can have two of them. Yeah. So. It could be like you have to adjust your strategies of counterplay to just like disengaging during the log turns, which of course the orcs will be trying to engage on the log turns, but I suppose that is the game. Yes, yes. All right, next up is going to be Storm Boys. Storm Boys stayed exactly the same with one very nice change. Mm -hmm. The one very nice change is when you uh, advance, you, can, you don't have to roll dice to see if your unit dies. Yeah. Um, which but, is very nice. Yeah, so Stormboys just advance and charge. They advance, fall back, and charge. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, and you don't have to... It, before, it was you roll a die for every model in the unit, and every one is a mortal. That got old fast, especially when you roll bad and just kill half your unit. Yeah, I mean, I, I take hazardous tests on Archiflage ones. One's happen, and you roll like three or four on ten dice, and you're like, what happened to my unit? And you do have a two-wound model at the front, but really, you do not want to take wounds on the guy who's holding the only good melee weapon in the yeah. unit. I don't think you're going to see, like, Stormboy spam because of this, but it's a nice claw of your life change, especially for like your five man skirmishers, they won't kill themselves. Exactly, and this is a good supplement to the uh, to the boys swarm. Mm -hmm. Add to... some speed, add some units that can go do an action when twenty boys is a little bit of a high opportunity cost. Exactly, so I think that's pretty good. So storm boys are pretty great. I mean, just a good MSU skirmisher. I love me some of that, but you know, look at a little bit of a side degrade, <laughs> a, a, a nerf, a nerf. A side degrade, a side <laughs> degrade. So it's to the side and then down, and then down. Not oh, a nerf, because if a nerf is strictly down, this is side down. It's the flash gets. The flash gets. <laughs> they didn't change one hair. I don't know what so you're talking about. So how could about. that be a nerf? How could that be a nerf? Uh, well, the only character who can join them is gone. Oh, more poor Mr. Badruck. What a cool org pirate. Pour one out for Mr. Badruck. Yeah, Badruck is bad uh, no no longer. He's, he's rocking in another dimension. Off to now. the Legends world. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure nobody can join. Yeah, none of the mechs can join him. Yeah, no, so he is... Uh, they are just by themselves, and without rerolls to hit, they are substantially worse. Right. So um, you, you can still like keep them in a truck and like have them be like tough, good offensive bodies that shoot decent, and like that's okay. And their melee's not bad. Their melee's not bad. They're two wounds each. They are not a bad unit, but they they do not just solve your shooting phase like they used to. They also do not have the knobs keyword. So they do not get a benefit from the Bully Boys detachment, which would have been a good way to use them. That's true. Um, yeah. So even though they are knobs, like they are actually knobs, uh, they don't have the knobs keyword. Right. It's kind of like how, how Beast Nugget Boys and Storm Boys and Burner Boys are somehow not boys. Exactly. No one knows. Or Nobody knows how that works. Yeah. 
Um, but you know, another data sheet also changed a little bit, and that's going to be another big staple, especially in a lot of these attachments. I think so. The Squig Hogs. Yeah, the Squig Hogs uh, kind of had a reimagining for how their unit's going to function, and it definitely went in the way I like. More. <laughs> more. Just more of them. So what, what happened to Squig Hogs? So their unit size changed. Uh, they basically, they stayed the same as far as um, offense, like defense, offense defense, the whole nine yards, um, which is pretty good. Like their profile is, is really strong. Especially with two logs or a nine inch scout move. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so they also have really good bases for, for their unit size, where something like Thunderwolves are basically unusable in large units. Squig Hogs are not. They're right. very usable they're, in, small, they're in weird, large units. Um, ovular base is actually quite manipulatable into getting creating good combat stuff. Yeah, so they're very usable in large units and they just got bigger. Uh, now instead of the knob on Smash or Squig being its own separate unit, it's not, it is a part of the unit and you can't not take it. Um, the unit composition is three Squig Hog Boys and a knob on Smash or Squig, or Six Squig Hog Boys and two knobs on Smash or Squig. So it's one of those weird orc units that has access to two knobs. Interestingly enough, you can take the knob on Smash or Squig not as its own data sheet, but as a pretty attached dude here. But he's not a character, he's like a sergeant. So basically, you can do what you used to do lower your assassinate score, have a bigger, better, beefier unit to use strats on. And somehow, somehow this is good. Yes. <laughs> uh, you still get two bomb squigs and. Um, and a six man. In, a, in an eight man. An eight man. In yeah, an eight right. man now. And you still ignore all modifiers to move advance and charge rolls for the unit, which you did before. This is the kind of unit that wants to be as big as possible. Right? If you could join all three units together into one super duper unit, you basically would. Yeah. Um, so your goal is just get as many of these bodies on the table as possible because when you have more of them, they each get better. Yeah. So as a critical mass kind of unit, it really loves this. Yeah, if you're the kind of person who wants to run 18 or now 24 squig hog riders, it's a good time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Join with the characters, 27 squigs, let's go. I do love me some squigs. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. You know what else is solid that got some changes and has a whole detachment centered around them? The killer cans. So let's go over their profile because I certainly don't know what they do. Sure. <laughs> I read them and then I forgot because they don't do anything. They have a lot of weird words on their data sheet. Well, now they have an ability. We're just going to start right with it. It's, it's pretty funny. It's called Shooty Power Trip. It used to be they could get, like, Ignore's Cover or something in exchange for possibly having to shoot possibly having to do mortals to a unit nearby instead. It was kind of not great. Now they roll a d6. Every time they're selected to shoot, you may roll a d6. You can do it, and you might not. Mm -hmm. Because on a 3 to a 4, you get plus 1 strength to ranged weapons. On a 5 to a 6, plus 1 shot to ranged weapons. Hmm. On a 1 or a 2... They take D6 mortal wounds. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, very orky. So, and there's no way to select this. You just roll it. Yeah, obviously, like, plus one shot on, if we recall, the Dread Mob Detachment, whatever it's oh, called. Yeah. That's going to be nuts. You know, you got your sustained hits or lethal hits or plus one AP, your reroll hits, your plus one AP, plus one damage. It's going to go crazy. But instead, oops, D6 mortals to my squad accidentally killed a killer can. Could just happen. Yeah, they are five wounds. So I'm probably going to roll this die more often than I don't because the odds you actually kill a killican are not high. It's a one in three into another one in three, so one in nine you actually lose a killican. But that's of course assuming that the unit is undamaged already. That's true. If I've got left a one wound, I'm probably not rolling it. It could definitely be the case where you just have a bad shooting interaction where you planned for your killican unit to get all your buffs and like totally decimate your opponent. But oops, instead I killed the can by triggering this ability. I rolled bad shooting when I shot you. I rolled some bad hazardous tests. I killed three of my cans and I killed one squad. Yes. That, that would be a poor way for that to go. I will say, into a 10-man unit, if you roll a 5 or a 6, they do, on average, put out 6 cans, on average, uh, pump out 30 shots. So talk to me about what a killer can shoots. How, how hard can we stack it with all those pre-buffs from the detachment? It's going to be a rocket launcher. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take rocket launchers. They're the best shooting profile here by far. So you, you're going to take a rocket launcher that's D3 shots blast, hits on 4s, at strength 9, minus 2, damage 3. Mm -hmm. 
you can not only get plus one shot yeah. or plus one strength, and strength takes it to strength 10. That's a good break point. That's a good break point. Yeah. So theoretically, you can give this unit sustained, lethal, or AP four on sixes to wound. For one of those three. Ability. Yep. You can theoretically off their data sheet get plus one strength or plus one shot, which is a ridiculous buff. <laughs> you can give plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles and plus one damage, and you can get reroll hits. Yeah, real hits, sustained hits, or lethal hits, or AP, plus one shot, or, or strength, plus one to wound, plus one damage. So these are damage four, plus one to wound, shots being thrown around. This stuff's good. With fun. reroll hits and sustain. Like you, you and you can just, can just choose, choose reroll hits and yeah. sustain. Yeah, you can just choose that. So at that point, you're hitting on fours, rerolling a 75% hits rate, plus sustain with rerolls, is pumps that up to like 100. And then you're plus one to wound, strength 10, potentially, or just double shots. And then. Plus one damage, and you're higher AP. It's, it's disgusting. This is like a ludicrous amount of firepower. Yeah. Now it is one CP to do the reroll hits, and it is one CP for plus one and plus one damage. So that, at least two CP to make this work. I'm willing to spend those CP. You sure? I'll are. tell you that. And you also have the backup in terms of the Grot tanks, which are ten rocket launches per eight. They get all the relevant buffs except maybe plus one shot, maybe plus one strength. Definitely not going to do the more wounds themselves though. So like that's a lot of profiles that are firing those at you, but don't worry. You also have clank clanking claws. Clanking claws. Clanking claws. <laughs> On the charge, in Wat turn, we're looking at strength eleven, four attacks. It's you know four attacks, weapon skill four, strength eleven, AP two, damage four with clanking claws if you push it. Pretty pretty strong, you know. Yep. Yep. Fighting yep. in all phases, yep. fighting potentially yep. way too strong. Yep. Than they should. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Rock, rock ticks. Yeah. This is a shooting army, but if you get close, you're getting clanked. I really like this. I don't. I truly like. Don't know how good this is. It could be insane. It could be like not good enough. I I really want to see it on the board for some frame of reference. But I think it's so thematic and fun sounding. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've covered the the killer cans, we've got just a few more grot data sheets to kind of go through that might might just synergize in this detachment a little bit. Yeah. So the mech guns are grot vehicles. So uh. you get the benefit of every ability uh, from the grot tank horde, which is pretty. Pretty dang good, and their ability changed. So their ability is um, now it used to be when you targeted ten or more model, you know, strong model unit, you got reroll ones to hit. Now it's just if you target a unit at its starting strength, other than monsters and vehicles. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mech guns. You be popping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're 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 popping. It's Several of these are pretty good. Smasher gun is very long range blast with D three plus one and nine three three. Yeah. That's a good profile. In modern forty k, you still have a lot of ruins every few inches. So like a long range slow moving line of sight direct shooting gun probably will struggle to see stuff. But you line them up, you put the buffs on them, stuff's gonna feel it. That's right. And you can have these things coming off a board edge. You mm -hmm. can have them rapid ingressing. Yeah. You can have them. Just just start in a like a firing, firing lane. lane. Just own it unless your opponent wants to engage in that firefight. And then a bunch of grot vehicles are already walking into mid board. And if they shoot at the grot vehicles, you're like, mech guns, three smasher guns, go! Bah! And I yeah. think smasher guns are the best. D3 plus one shots at 933 blast. Yeah. It's pretty solid. I think points are going to have to be the determining factor on whether or not you include these. I know there's been times where the mech guns have been like dirt cheap and there's been like competitive lists that run 18. And then there's times where you run zero. So we'll see where they fall. Yep. Yeah. I, I doubt you're going to see nine, but you could yeah. see a, a unit of three, two units of three. Mm -hmm. And especially coming off a of board edge, this thing's going to be nasty. Or even just like solo ones or decent screens and like they add some level of damage. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Traditionally, they've been pretty cheap, but yeah. we'll see where that goes. Right. So we got two more data sheet changes, and these are, of course, everybody's favorite, the buggies. Yeah, Rucker Truck Squig Buggy. So if we're looking at the Rucker Truck Squig Buggy, their ability changed. Their mm -hmm. ability was they got plus one to hit against infantry units. Mm -hmm. That is gone. They are now no longer that. When they shoot an enemy unit that is not monsters and vehicles, uh, on a four up, that unit is minus two move advance charge. That's good. It's that, good. That's good. I think I'd rather take the plus one to hit for sure because their gun is not heavy. So if you're shooting out of line of sight, you're hitting on sixes. Oh, that's not very reliable. Do you just have to hit them to cause this check? You do have to hit them. Okay, so unlikely you'll miss with the number of shots, but sixes, I've rolled nine dice, not gotten sixes plenty of times in my yep. life. It's D6 plus six shots, blast, five, one, two, ignores cover indirect. 
it's good that it ignores cover yeah. because you're going to give cover to everybody, but it is going to hit on sixes almost every time. I don't think you're taking this as a damage dealer. It's just really not. It's, yep. it's like a technical slow to your opponent down piece, which probably is not something orcs need in their life, but as matchup tech, it can be nice. Yep. You can have a mech go tink tink and make it hit on fives again, but that's really not threatening yep. that much. No, it's just a reliable way to slow something down. But on a four up. On a four, so reliable for works. <laughs> Um, what the, is the last profile? The Boom Daka Snaz Wagon is the last data sheet that got some changes. Ah, uh, yes. So this one, uh, again, like the squig buggy, got a nerf. Oh. This one used to be six inch or minus one to hit for enemies. So mm -hmm. if an enemy was within like six nearby, inches, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If an enemy was within six of you, they were minus one to hit. Now it is that, but not monsters and vehicles. Oh, so it's it's like a strictly worse version of that. Exactly. Yeah. Now, of course, I like to like look at things in the context of 40k rules changes. as forget the past. This is the new new. Um, but you know, getting nerfed always feels bad. Of course, of yeah. course. Um, but that is the last data sheet change in this book. That's the last. Uh, that's that's the last change. Awesome. Well, that's orcs. I'm very excited. I think they got a lot of really cool love in the detachments. Mega knobs may be too strong. We'll, we'll, we'll see about that. I'm pretty sure, but we'll find out. Um, overall, though, I think the orc army is really flavorful, really fun. Maybe slight nerf to bully boys after a few rounds we'll, of we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see where points come out. Uh, there's definitely a price point where mega knobs are fine. That's true. Um, that's true. We'll, see what, we'll see what it is. And I'm super excited to try out a bunch of these detachments. I honestly can't really decide which one I want to try Which one's first. your favorite? It's probably Bully Boys. Yeah. It probably is. It suits my play style of just like smashing people off yeah. the board. Um, but the, the Green Tide sounds really, really frustrating. The Green me. Tide is my favorite. I feel like there's a lot of janky nonsense you can pull in there. It still has enough teeth that you can actually hurt somebody. And it's got this weird up and down charge mechanic, which I love. Yeah, I'm, I'm super into putting the Green Tide on the table. I, I really want to do that. That's the other one I'm debating. Yeah. Uh, this, the the other ones I'm willing to, to make a list for third and fourth or whatever the mm -hmm. yeah, the we'll, snag is we'll one definitely is, get an orc tier list on the, on the oh, channel yeah. pretty soon. So yeah. if you're into this stuff, we're gonna rank them all for you. The beast snagger one seems pretty damn good, and I want to give it uh, give it a shake and see what's got in it. And obviously the the grot tank one is just vile amounts of damage coming out of that army. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see how that functions. That's the one, more than Mega Noms, that's the one I'm scared of. Yeah, I, I don't think the Grot Tank one is going to be the firepower gunline menace that it definitely could be based on its rules. Um, but, you know, we will, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I mean, when you have 24 Grot Tanks and 18 Killicans walking at you firing hundreds of rocket <laughs> shots a turn. We're going to see how you feel about that. It, it would not be the first time orc shooting is a little too too oh. silly, too good. <laughs> yeah, so that's the one I want to really look out for. Mega Knobs also can be pretty pretty ridiculous. But ultimately, it comes down to points. We'll see where those are placed. The rules that orcs have been given are super exciting and very cool. And uh, I can't wait to put them on the table. Which you can see right now, oh my God! <laughs> Go straight from this video into the war room with the link below. The war room.vhx.tv three day free trial. Get access to all of Jack's thoughts on the work army and a game right now. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be we'll putting it on the table. You can check out the game right now. You can also check out we're gonna have games in the coming, uh, you know, in the coming week and several weeks and in the future. And uh, don't don't forget to check back because I am super excited to put these rules on the table. That's right. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this orc masterclass breakdown of the orc codex preview. I'm so excited to get my wog on the table and get back in green. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you later. Bye bye.